There's a new kit on the block for premium desktop audio interfaces. Let's take a look at the Antelope Audio ZenQ Synergy Core. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. The ZenQ Synergy Core from Antelope Audio is a brand new desktop audio interface which combines high quality hardware with really powerful software, including some onboard latency free effects. Now for most of you, this would be a massive leap forward in terms of both quality and workflow as well. But what makes it so special? Let's start off by taking a look at the hardware. The ZenQ Synergy Core is a 14 in, 10 out, 24 bit, 192 kilohertz Thunderbolt audio interface. It has an entirely metal casing with a brushed metal top that I rather like. The controls are few but powerful. With a combination of using the three buttons and pressable control knob, we can adjust gain, output levels, switch input modes, turn on phantom power and quite a bit more. And as you've no doubt noticed, the large color display gives us great visual feedback for all that we're adjusting. To the rear we see our first two inputs being XLR and quarter inch combos for mic, line and instrument level inputs. These allow us to record using the two high quality discrete ultra linear preamps with 65 decibels of gain. Next to this we see our main quarter inch balance monitor outputs and next to them a further two quarter inch balance line outputs. We get another two inputs and two outputs via SP diff and another eight inputs via ADAT. Finally we see a Thunderbolt 3 connector which also supplies power to the unit. I've been testing this with a PC but of course it's also Mac compatible. At the front of the interface we see another two inputs being for line or instrument level and something which is really nice to see, two independent stereo headphone outputs. The ZenQ Synergy Core is built by Antelope Audio in Bulgaria and everything about the build quality feels really solid and premium. So although this interface looks and feels really great, I think it's with the audio quality you start to feel the benefits. The discrete preamps ensure really high quality going in and you've got enough gain there to run things like my Shure SM7B without having to use a cloud lifter. But I really think it's with the powerful onboard software that you begin to feel the benefits, especially in terms of the built-in DSP and FPGA latency-free effects. Let's take a look. So here we are looking at the ZenQ Synergy Core control panel. Now this may look very similar to other software that you get with other audio interfaces, but it works a little bit differently. And the fact that it works differently is where I think a lot of its power comes from and makes it very, very useful indeed. But let's start off by looking at the basics. We've got five labels on the left hand side here and they kind of indicate what's going on on the right hand side. So at the top, we've got our preamps. We've got our four preamps there in that row. Then we have the label AFX. That indicates that this row is for our audio effects. Now I know that's the bit that you're really interested in and I promise we'll get back to that soon. But first of all, let's look at the last three labels which are actually switches and they switch between three different mixes. We have one mix here, which is for our main monitor and headphones one. Now they share the same mix, although you can control the levels separately, of course, down here. Then we have a different mix for headphones two and another mix for line out, okay? Now we're gonna stick with the first one here, the main monitor out and headphone one. Now incidentally, I actually have an output from this going to another audio interface so I can record this and you can hear exactly what I'm hearing. Now let's go right back up to the top and first of all look at the preamps. We have our four preamps. Now the way we use these is quite straightforward. If we look at the second one here, we can switch between different types of inputs. So we've got mic here, we can go to line or we can go to high Z or instrument level there. We'll go back to mic and you can see here if we click on the little mic icon, that brings up another little interface here and we can switch uh, our phantom power off and on there. There may have been a little click there and then we can uh, switch our phase here. And if we do have one of the uh, modeling mics that Antelope Audio make, we can switch between those here. I don't have any of those at the moment. I hope to review some of those for you in the future, but that's where you would select them there. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward and we can control our level there. 
I'm sure you're used to using these kinds of things. Now, where it gets really interesting is this. I bet you assumed that these four mic preamps line up with these faders down here, but they don't. I want you to think of these as sources and think of these as inputs. And the reason I'm saying that is because your door will see these eight faders that you can see here at the moment as your inputs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But you don't necessarily have to have, say, preamp one on input one you could have anything on input one or any of your sources on input one so we could switch well in fact we'll do it with um, input two we'll switch input two from preamp two to preamp one now if i start talking things got a little bit louder i'll mute that they got a little bit louder because now you can see that the microphone i'm speaking through which is preamp one is now on input one and input two okay and you may be wondering well why would you do that well one example of why you would do that is you could now apply effects to input one and not to input two. That means in your door, you could record them separately. So you could record this microphone uh, completely dry with no effects and also record it on another channel in your door or another track in your door with effects applied. You could record both of them or just one of them up to you. If you just want a dry sound recorded and you want to hear the effects through your headphone, you can do that. If you just want to go ahead and record that wet signal that you you're hearing through your headphones here you can do that so that's a kind of nice versatile way of doing it okay so we can switch in other words sources or assign sources to um, different inputs and as i say they could be preamps like this or as you can see they could be uh, the microphones that we talked about earlier they could be outputs from your door you can loop them back into inputs here now that's really interesting we're going to touch upon that later you're probably already thinking oh so you could kind of create a loop with effects on it mm -hmm, that's right now moving on from there you could assign uh, ADAT inputs there you could do uh, SP diff inputs you could mute it and you've also got a couple of oscillators as well for sort of test tones if you like for when you're setting up equipment so that's really versatile and very very different now let's talk about the effects there's two basic effects that I'm going to talk about uh, first of all um, of course, you want to know about the effects that you can insert here. But before we talk about that, let's talk about another effect which we have on board, which is a reverb. OK, now we get to that by clicking up here uh, for Aura Verb. I'll just click on that and you can see the interface pops up here. Now, why is this different to every, everything else? Well, this cannot be used as, as an effect in your door or anything. This is just for while you're tracking. This is really handy. Lots of singers especially will find that they perform a little bit better if they've just got a touch of reverb in their headphones while they're performing but that's often not something you'd want to record um, into your door so we've got that here um, at the moment it's switched off if i just switch it on you can hear the effect here okay fine um now there's lots of um, options there you can change that a lot here and you can control how much uh, of the channel that you're using at the moment with this send here goes to the reverb so you can have reverb on some things not on others so that's a very very cool feature and i think it sounds really nice and that definitely does help the performance of um singers especially but it could be guitarists etc as well of course now that's one effect which is just as i say on board and for the headphones the main effects get inserted in here so all we have to do here is click on this space brings up this sort of effects rack if you like here and then we can start adding in effects so let me go ahead and just go and pop in let's say a compressor i'll just choose that pop that in there and there we have a fet a76 compressor um let's go ahead i could put in say a guitar amp here uh -huh, just like that and say um a guitar cabinet here the guitar plugins, by the way, are some of the the 37 plugins that you get with this interface for free. So if you're a guitarist, this is a big bonus. It means you don't have to worry about latency anymore when you're recording your electric guitar. Very, very cool indeed. So you can see the usual controls for an amp there. You can do things like move your mics around, uh, change the microphones, etc., etc. Now, by the way, I should just quickly mention some of the techn technology involved here because 
There are two basic types of um, effects chips on board with these uh, Synergy Core products from Antelope. The first is DSP FX, which I think is a kind of an industry standard. And then there is the, um, what are they called? The FPGA FX, almost forgot there. The FPGA FX um, are a different type of processing now they use a combination of these two. I have to say, you don't really have to know any of this, but um, I believe that the FPGA effects are really, really powerful, give you a lot more processing power than DSP effects. Um, they use a combination of the both here, as of both here, and as I say, it's seamless. You don't really need to know about it, but it does mean the main thing you need to understand is that you get a lot more effects processing power on these units than you're used to seeing on a lot of other units. Okay, so just worth knowing from that point of view so we can actually on this one channel insert up to uh eight effects here on this one channel okay and as you can see there's all kinds of different effects there you get 37 effects with the unit and i think there's like another 50 or so that you can actually purchase as well so you can have eight effects on that channel and then you can go ahead and put another um, eight effects on any of these first six channels that you can see here. OK, so that's a lot of effects being used in real time while you're tracking. Now, it's really handy to have effects while you're tracking and it's great to be able to record those effects those effects or not but what about using these effects and using the processing power of this unit while you're mixing well there's a couple of different ways that you can go about doing that there is the completely free out of the box way of doing it which is not really difficult but a little more difficult than the second way which i'm going to be able to tell you about which is probably free under a lot of circumstances that's confusing isn't it let's just look at the first method which is completely free now I'm going to demonstrate this in Studio One because the way it's done in Studio One here is the same way that you can do it in any other door. Except with Studio One, there's another way of doing it, which is just a little bit easier. I'm going to show you that quickly. But first of all, let's look at the way we've got things set up with the ZenQ control panel. This is very important. For inputs three and four here, okay, I have the sources as computer play three and four they could be any other number i've chosen three and four for both the outputs and the inputs so this is as if we've taken a cable from the back of the interface and then plugged it straight back into one of the inputs creating a kind of a loop except there's no cables involved this is all done kind of virtually from within the software here so it's very important we understand that now i've just got one effect on there the veq 1a um, this is just an eq and i've just boosted the highs in there this is so we can easily hear what's going on okay so that's the control panel there now here in studio one i have some drums here on channel one i'll quickly play those for you that's just so we've got something to listen to while we do this now i also need to show you the way i've set up my inputs and outputs here in studio one i'll just open the interface for that here so for the inputs i've got just the regular preamp set up on one and two i could have set up in a different way but then for three and four as a stereo input i've got um that computer play remember going through there so i've made sure i've got this and this is called effects return here i've labeled that effects return okay now for my outputs i have my main outputs which are normally going to the main monitors of course and then i've set up two other outputs and i've called them effects send okay they are three and four and that re they represent computer play th three and four okay that we looked at earlier so that's how we create that kind of loop from within studio one um with other doors you can't necessarily label them they just may be called three and four in each of those that's fine so what i'm going to do now is create a send from my drum here i'll just click on that and i'm just going to send them to my effects send so those are computer play three and four now what i'm going to do is just change this um, to a pre-fader send and then i'll just put my fader all the way down so we can no longer hear those drums okay we'll listen yep we can hear nothing and that's because we don't have it looped back yet to do that we're going to have to create a new input okay so i'll create a new audio input here in studio one um i'll do uh, i'll make a stereo one here because my drums are in stereo i'm using uh two inputs and outputs for this 
and then you can see that the input for this is already on effects return it may have come up as something else luckily for me it's the one i want effects return so those are inputs three and four from the zen q okay now we've got this little loop happening i'll have to turn on uh my direct monitoring here so that we can hear what's happening and if we play the drums now sorry just switch that off We can hear those very tinny drums and that's because over here in the effects I have the boost up on those high frequencies. So you can see how that's working there, okay? Um, that may seem a little bit complicated. We are going to look at an easier way in a moment. But first of all, let's just look at the easier way in Studio One. We'll get rid of that second channel there. So I'll just remove that track there. I'll get rid of my effects send. I won't be needing that anymore. I'll put my fader back up. So we're back to how we were. Now, what we can do in Studio One is simply use an insert. So I'll just prep plus on there to add an insert. And I'll go down to this. Um, one that we have with Studio One called Pipeline Stereo in this case, okay? Click on that, and in Pipeline um, XT here, we can just select our send here on one side and select our return on the other side, and that's it, we're done. We can also mix between the two, so we're hearing uh, the full effects there. I can blend them. So you can see that's much easier in Studio One, but very possible in all doors. Now, all of that may seem a little bit difficult to you, a little bit more complex than the way you're used to doing things with plugins. So luckily, there is a way to do it with a plugin which you can get. Let's talk about that next. So this method is super quick and super easy. And I think that you can probably get the plugin that I'm about to talk about for free. I'm saying probably, I'll explain that in a moment. But first of all, let's look at the method because it really is quite quick to demonstrate. I'm here in Studio One again. I've got my drums again. This time I'm going to go up to inserts, click on plus here and go down to this plugin, AFX to door. This is made by Antelope Audio. I'll just insert that there. It comes up with this interface similar to what we saw earlier in the control panel. It's like an effects rack. We can go ahead now and add the effects from Antelope Audio that we were using on, it, on our interface earlier. Now, the cool thing about this is we're using them from within our door, just like a regular plugin, but they're not being processed using our computer, CPU, or memory. They're being processed on our interface. They're using the power of our interface, freeing up those resources on our computer, which is very, very handy indeed. So why do I keep being sort of cagey about whether this is a free plugin or not? At the time I got my interface here, there was a special offer on which I could take advantage of where I'd get a few extra plugins. And one of them was this AFX to door. Now it's currently listed is costing $199 on the Antelope Audio uh, website. But it is included with all of the effects bundles which I had available to me for free. Now, my understanding is from other people, Antelope haven't told me this, but other people from around the web and on YouTube seem to be saying that these special offers are always on from Antelope Audio. <laughs> So it turns out that while I was editing this video, Antelope Audio did in fact announce another bundle available for free with this interface. It does include AFX to door, as well as a bunch of other really cool things. That goes on until the end of September at the time of making this video. So check the link in the description down below for that. And it kind of makes everything else I was about to say about this irrelevant. So we'll go on to the next part. Now, as I mentioned, this is a Thunderbolt 3 interface, and it's partly because of that technology that we get the advantages we do. Now, it does mean that you'll have to double check that your hardware is compatible with Thunderbolt 3. And that likely means whether you're using PC or Mac, that you're gonna need a fairly recent model. Now, the other thing I wanted to mention was to do with the installation, because it works a little bit differently to other audio interfaces that I've used. You have to initially install their launcher, and register the device before use. Now, I think this is worth mentioning because I did follow the instructions really carefully, but it struck me that if I'd made assumptions, I could have come unstuck. Now, I didn't have to end up contacting support or anything like that. I did manage to get it all up and running, but I did follow those instructions. So I recommend that you do too.
Whilst the price of the ZenQ Synergy Core would be a significant investment for most of you, it does deliver in terms of hardware quality, audio quality, and really powerful features as well. Tracking with the onboard latency-free effects is an absolute joy, especially if you're a vocalist or an electric guitarist. And honestly, once you've tracked in this way, it's hard to go back to the old way of doing things. They also provide a really healthy number of plugins to get you going as well. Now, in terms of other audio interfaces in this class, there's really not that much competition, but this does compete really well in terms of the initial cost and the cost of the plugins that you may wish to buy at a later date. So it's definitely worth weighing all of that up. Now, let me know what you think in the comments down below, and also check the links in the description for places you can buy this and also the current prices as well. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I'll see you in the next video.